You are watching ESPN's Road to Champ Week, presented by Wendy's. In Knoxville, Tennessee, getting ready for an SEC battle between the number one team in the nation, undefeated, and the reigning champion, South Carolina Gamecocks, taking on the Tennessee Lady Vols. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. We take a look at the SEC standings, the top seven. South Carolina, number one, Tennessee, unranked, but they are number three in the SEC, 12 and two, as we welcome you courtside. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, so happy to be with you this Thursday night on ESPN. South Carolina has not lost a game in nearly a calendar year. If Tennessee is gonna be the team to hand them that loss, they're gonna need a big night from Rakia Jackson. Yeah, they certainly will, and Rakia Jackson has been coming through for them all season long. She has been on a tear, especially in the last four games. In that time, averaging 25 points and eight boards a game. Why is she so important tonight? Because she can create her own offense at 6'2". She can drive by bigger defenders or post up smaller ones. Her ability to create tonight will be huge for Tennessee. Jordan Horston, the other member of that talented Tennessee duo. They are one of two Division I duos, averaging 15 points and six rebounds. Iowa's Kaitlin Clark, Monica Sonano, the other. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, the center of their orbit is Aaliyah Boston. Yes, the reigning national player of the year. She is a 6'5 force inside. She has played through double and triple teams all season long, averaging 13 points a game. She's a menace on the offensive glass. Just over three and a half offensive boards a game, and yes, an elite paint protector. On the defensive end, she'll help you up as well. <laughs> averaging nearly a double-double. And as great as Aaliyah Boston has been, it's actually Zaya Cook who leads the team in scoring. For more on Zaya, here is Holly Rowe. Well, Zaya Cook has blossomed into a complete basketball player this season. In years past, she would let her offensive game dictate how the game went. If she wasn't shooting well, she would zone out. Don Staley said last year I might have had to take her out of the game and make her sit if she wasn't defending. But this year, she is doing it all. Coming off a best game with 24 points against Ole Miss in an overtime win, but it was her defense that defined her. Put on to the toughest player for Ole Miss, Angel Baker. She held her to just three points in the third quarter. Zaya Cook is finally letting her complete game do the talking, whether it's defense, passing, being there for her teammates, and yes, when she scores, that helps too. Yeah, Holly, it has been incredible maturation for Zaya Cook. A talented South Carolina team, undefeated at that scare against Ole Miss, but escaped in overtime. You talk about the defense of Zaya Cook, the defense of South Carolina in general is just Incredible. They're number one in the nation in defensive rating, number one in defensive field goal percentage. Big challenge tonight for Tennessee in front of a juiced up crowd here at Rocky Top. And South Carolina wins the tip. Kiara Fletcher controls. Tennessee starting in a man-to-man -man defense. And you see all of the attention that they're going to give to Aaliyah Boston right now. Sandwich, front and back. Here's Fletcher on the drive. Stops, kicks, Zaya Cook traveled, and South Carolina turns it over. Take a look at the Tennessee starting five. Jordan Walker, Jordan Horston, Tess Darby, who's played really well over the last few games. Rakia Jackson and Caroline Striplin round out the starting lineup. South Carolina starting out in their man-to-man, -man, which is their bread and butter D. Jackson was able to shove away Saxton, got away with it and finished. Sakia Jackson, 6'2", and a great athlete, explosive off the bounce as we saw there, not afraid of contact. Here is Boston, Fletcher, Finds Beal, her three off the mark. Nice box out there from Tennessee. Always a monumental task, keeping South Carolina off the offensive glass. Oh, the spin. Horston couldn't flip it in, and Boston comes away with it. Zaya Cook off and running. Cook leans in, can't bank it home. Coming back for the board is Striplin. Striplin nearly had it stolen by Beal, one of the best defenders, if not the best defender in the nation. 
Jordan Horse and Enrique Jackson are both not only needing to be in attack mode as you see the three go up, but they have to be under control as well. The last possession, Horston shot could have led to an easy two the other way. Fletcher trying to get it into Boston. Boston is used to this sandwiching defense. It has happened with remarkable consistency. She gets a touch here, and that's why you sandwich her, because when you don't, she does that. Yeah, if she catches anywhere near the basket, she is almost automatic. She has to work so hard, though, just to get a touch on the ball. Leah Boston, last year's player of the year. Seeing double and triple teams regularly as Striplin leaves it short on a three. Here's Beal. Finds Boston. Boston flips it in. Pass might have been intended for Cook on the back cut, but Boston was there to take care of it. Yeah, great job by South Carolina. Just the direct entry. Boston had done her work and gotten great, in pos great position inside. So back-to-back -back buckets for Aaliyah Boston. Orstein got that one to drop. She read the defense really well, rejecting the on-ball screen and getting a great look at the basket. Jordan Horston coming off 19 in Sunday's win against Auburn. Tennessee started this season 7-6. and six. They're 13-3 since as Beal gets the offensive rebound and puts it home. 49%. 49% of South Carolina's misses, they go and get. A missed shot for them is almost like an assist. I mean, that is such a preposterous number. <laughs> you just don't ever see that kind of offensive rebounding percentage. As Walker spins into two. Jordan Walker, a player Kelly Harper just absolutely loves the heart, grit, and fight of. And that is going the other way. Bree Beal gets called for the charge as Jackson took the contact. Kelly Harper in her fourth season. The former star guard for the Lady Vols won three national titles under Pat Summit and Dawn Staley. Now in her 15th season at the helm of South Carolina. A two-time national champion, including the reigning national champion. Walker, confident stroke, can get that one to drop. Here's Cook, stutters around Darby. Met a wall in the paint. Fletcher looks to attack. Fletcher couldn't get it to drop. Boston got her hands on it, but a last touch. Tennessee going to stay here with South Carolina. And South Carolina's guards are used to this kind of defense in terms of teams playing off them. So what do you do? You get in attack mode. We saw it. Bree Beal, last possession, and then Fletcher there. Here's Cook, guarded by Horston. Fletcher flashes and hits from the free throw line. She is not going to take a lot of threes, but that pull-up mid-range is her game. Grad transfer from Georgia Tech. This last season due to injury, over 1,000 points in her career at Georgia Tech. Horston able to shovel it in with the right hand. Four points early on from Jordan Horston. We just get the feeling if Tennessee is going to be in it tonight, they're going to need a lot from Jackson and a lot from Horston. Yeah, without question. I think each player is going to need to go for about 20 points. Beal can't knock down the three. Nice job on the box out from Jackson. Jackson dashing into the paint. Can't spin it in, but gets the whistle and will shoot two. Kira Fletcher is not going to pull the trigger when she's open from three, but she'll take the mid-range. And on the other end for Tennessee, they're looking to attack. And Ryan, this is a game, South Carolina's team defense is so good. You're not gonna have a lot of high assist games against them, and Tennessee doesn't have any. It's going to be a lot of attacking and looking to score off of individual offense. Well, we told you about how hot Rakia Jackson has been lately, her last four games, second leading scorer in the SEC. And I asked her today at practice, why have you been so hot? She said, I'm getting to my spots on the floor and my teammates are trusting me. Remember, she's new to this team. They're trying to learn her. She's trying to learn them. And when I said, well, what are those spots? 
that you're getting to that you're so good. She took a breath and with a totally straight face said, everywhere on the court. <laughs> she, <laughs> she really believes in herself, but she did say the mid-range, about 15 foot, is her sweet spot. Mississippi State transfer, and Holly brings up an interesting point, Rebecca, that I know is something that's been a focus for you, and it's the teams that had a lot of transfers as Beal misfires on another three. Saxton, a strong rebound and putback. Teams that had a lot of transfers, especially at key positions, meaning players that are being relied upon, you thought it might take them into February, yep. maybe even March to really find their groove, and we're seeing that with some teams. Yeah, we're seeing that certainly with Maryland. I think we're seeing it with this Tennessee group, Texas as well. Louisville feels like they're finding their groove. Hollingshed off the bench, knocks down a jumper. And a whistle underneath, gonna go against Jackson, I believe. Her first will step aside. Tennessee off to a strong start here against the number one team in the nation, a 12-10 lead. South Carolina wants to play through their big, notably their reigning national player of the year, Aaliyah Boston with a strong one. Jordan Horst and making her mark as well. That's pretty. Holly is going into the Hall of Fame this August and could not be more deserving. You talk about the greatest storytellers in the history of sports television and Holly Rowe should be number one on everybody's list. You will not find someone who is more respected, more beloved by everybody she covers than Holly Rowe or who's more passionate for what she does than Holly and Rebecca, I know you and I, it's it's the greatest joy for us getting to work with someone who's become one of our best friends in Miss this world. Miss Holly, no one does it better. Congratulations, Holly. You stinkers, I, now I'm crying, <laughs> I'm so mad at you. I'm trying to cover basketball and now I'm crying. Well, Thank you guys, it is the joy of my life to work with you guys, I appreciate that, that was very sweet. And you wore a terrific jacket for a day you're going to be honored like that. I mean, Holly brings it every day, but that jacket. <laughs> Jackson leads in and banks it home. Rakia Jackson off to a strong start, and so are the Lady Vols. And notice on this end of the floor, trying to deny Zaya Cook the basketball. The other four players have a foot in the paint, trying to swarm Camila Cardoso. Zaya Cook pedals her way through, gets rejected by Horston. What a get ahead to Jackson. Nice extra feed. And Cardoso did a terrific job just getting a hand on it to thwart the layup from Powell. Jasmine Powell and off the bench for Tennessee. So is Hollingshed. There's also a shoe on the ground. Hollingshed. There's also a shoe on the ground. <laughs> it's Letitia Mehears. If it was a Tennessee shoe, it would be in the lane. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the feet are for Tennessee. A Mehear gets a free lane that time. Cardoso couldn't finish it. And the rebound hugged by Hollingshed. Right now, Tennessee and Kelly Harper have to be thrilled with the way this is playing out. They're shooting the ball well. They're doing a reasonable job on the defensive glass. Oh, what a finish. A little dip from Jordan Horston. And on the other end, a strip from Powell. Here's Jackson with Powell. Jackson goes in strong and draws the foul against Raven Johnson. Free throws here for Jackson. Jordan Horston has certainly come to play today, and her finishes have not been easy. What do you do when you take on 6-7? Well, you've got to do something. And that time, the little pump fake and able to get by. And this is the thing, Ryan, when you play a team like South Carolina, who is so dominant on the offensive glass, you know they are going to get more field goal attempts than you. And so one of the things you have to do is shoot an incredibly high percentage. Right now, Tennessee doing that, 54%. And you talked about Jackson and Horston and needing big performances from them tonight. They have both gotten off to really strong starts on both ends of the floor. Yes. Six, both ends of the floor. Yes. Six points for each of them in this points 
for each of them in this first quarter as Jackson hits the second. Aaliyah Boston back in now for South Carolina as Tennessee will send in Jasmine Franklin and send Tess Darby to the bench. And when Cardoso and Aaliyah Boston are in together, it is the most difficult matchup to defend inside because of their strength and size, in particular on the offensive glass. Sarah Puckett into the game for Tennessee as well. Whistle here against the Lady Vols. A women's college hoop Sunday on ESPN at noon. Olivia Miles, number 10 Notre Dame, take on Louisville. Followed by Caitlin Clark, number six Iowa, hosting Mackenzie Holmes and number two Indiana. That should be a great game at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Coverage begins with college game day at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Going to be a busy day for you and Holly. Oh, exciting day. Look at how dirty this lane is. Boston can't hit the straight on jumper. A 7 0 Tennessee run. Here's a me here. Bree Hall giving space. Hall flips it up. Can't get the roll. Rebound batted around. Ends up in the arms of Puckett. Nice look inside. Forced into Franklin for two. And Kelly Harper told us when we're at our best, it's not just about Jordan Horston scoring. It's about her passing. It's about her defense or rebounding. We've seen a little of all of it in this first quarter. And a loose ball foul here against Tennessee and Franklin. Jordan Horston is a terrific passer. And at 6'2", she has clear vision, is able to deliver. There has been some inconsistent play from Jordan Horst in this season, but it's been very consistent so far in this first quarter. A 9-0 run for Tennessee. Facing a South Carolina team that has not lost in 353 days. Here's Hall, three to shoot. Hall goes up, under, and off. Controlled by Horston, and Tennessee can hold for a final shot here in this first. Horston directing traffic. A little early. Oh, that's not a good decision from Horston. You have to understand time and score. You have to take the last shot of the quarter in that situation. Yeah. And Kelly Harper pointed to her wrist as if to say, look at the time. Yeah. Instead of taking the final shot, South Carolina gets a crack here. Three seconds left in the quarter into Boston. Boston can't finish it, and that'll do it for the first. Tennessee could not be more delighted with that opening quarter against the defending champs. They ended on a 9-0 run. And get a standing O as we head to the second in Tennessee. Well, South Carolina has had a ton of success in the SEC. Six of the last nine regular season conference titles. They have 33 straight wins overall, the longest active Division I win streak. It has been 353 days since their last loss, but they just had their lowest scoring quarter of the season. Tennessee ended the first on a 9-0 run. And how is South Carolina feeling about that? Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, you know, Don Staley was very calm, very composed, wasn't really yelling at her team. They've been in this situation before. The target is on their back. She really just talked to them about got to get more than one opportunity, more second chance points, offensive rebounding, and then matching up in transition against the Lady Vols. Johnson speeds inside, finishes through the contact, plus the foul. And Holly, more important than anything, I think, is what we just saw for South Carolina, getting a stop and then pushing out in transition. When you look at the lineup that they have on the floor right now, they don't really have a great three-point shooter. Yeah. And so Tennessee can continue, if they're allowed to set up in the quarter court, to play the way that they've been playing. Transition opportunity is going to be huge for South Carolina. Now, in case you're wondering, wow, South Carolina's undefeated. How many times this season have they trailed at the end of the first quarter? Five times. Obviously, we know what happened the previous four times. <laughs> and, and a team that has some seasoned veterans who have not only been able to win games, but win some close games on the road. Yeah. 
Aaliyah Boston's class has had a lot of success at South Carolina. Final Four two seasons ago. The national championship last year, undefeated thus far this season. That was the first Tennessee turnover, a real key for Kelly Harper as Cardoso lays it in at 6-7. Not much you could do with that. Yeah, it does say it's like, all right, I don't care that I don't have any three-point shooters on there. I'll just go big and then bigger. Yeah. And if we can't get the ball into the post, we'll just get the offensive rebound on the miss. And I loved her line about Cardoso saying, she's our separator. Nobody else can bring anybody off the bench who can impact a game like she does. Nice little floater, nice little floater there from Striplin. And the play was completely created by dribble penetration from Jordan Horst and nice dump pass. Tennessee with 18 of their 21 points coming in the paint. Here's Johnson. No. Rebound Jackson. Jackson looking to push for Tennessee. Jackson accelerates, couldn't spin it in but gets the whistle. She has such a controlled pace about her in transition. And again, able to work her way to the line. She gets the whistle. Yeah. And, and you know when she's coming down in transition, she's really good when she can finish with a couple dribbles to her right side. It's gonna be the fifth and sixth free throw attempts for Jackson, who hits the first. A little hoop scoop on Rakia Jackson. Eats candy and makes TikToks before each game. I wonder if she makes TikToks about eating candy. <laughs> maybe. Perhaps. I don't follow her on TikTok. I need to add that, maybe. Uh, I, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really on TikTok. No, I was going to say, I, I didn't know you had an account. <laughs> I like how many players we're seeing this year, though, use candy as the pregame snack. Beal leaves it short. Horst in. Comes up with it. Here's Jackson again into the paint. Missed the layup. Boston did a nice job fending off Puckett on the glass. Here's Beal kicking. Hall can't bank in a three. Puckett comes back for it. Crowd applauds the D. Tennessee. Has watched South Carolina go 0 for 5 from 3 as Striplin tosses it out of bounds. Second Tennessee turnover. It gives us a chance to let you know that more college basketball is coming Saturday on ESPN. Great slate for you. 6 p.m. Eastern, number 6, Virginia takes on North Carolina, followed by Duke hosting Virginia Tech at 8 p.m. Then at 10, number 15, St. Mary's takes on number 12, Gonzaga. That last turn. That last turnover by Tennessee, only their third. This is a team that has had some issues with turnovers this season. Cardoso grabbed the offensive rebound, maybe could have pulled it back out instead of that falling away attempt. Oh, what a move. Horston could not finish it after the great deke. Beal, what a little left-handed side dribble from Beal on the other end, and that's going to earn her way to the line. For Tennessee, three missed layups. Pretty clean looks that they've had so far in this game. And again, you are not going to get as many field goal attempts as South Carolina when you play them. So vitally important to make anything that's easy. And Beal continues to do a really good job on this end of using her size and strength to kind of force her way in. How about Bree Beal as a pro prospect, Rebecca? I really like her. She's 6'1", she's got great size and strength, so defensively you know she can defend just about anybody and switch on to multiple positions. Her offensive game has to evolve, but has done that in her career, throughout her career at South Carolina. And her three-point shooting this season tonight, notwithstanding, has improved a lot, shooting at 40% from three this season. 0 for three thus far tonight, but a tenacious defender, Really mature young woman as well, who has a terrific competitive grit about her. This one's here now, post defense, just battling against Rakia Jackson. The three is good. Jordan Walker has been impactful in this first half. Meanwhile, on this end, South Carolina has missed 14 of its last 16 shots. 
Leaning in, Zaya Cook drops it in as Walker tried to draw the offensive foul but could not. I want to remind you, our next top 16 reveal comes at halftime here tonight. So make sure you keep it locked. Kelsey Riggs, Andrea Carter, Charlie Cream in our studios to reveal that and break it down. Jackson, no, Holling Shed keeps it alive just for a moment. Jordan Walker coming down, rejects the screen, dribbles around and able to hit the three. And Zaya Cook, same thing, off the dribble, getting inside. Just a nice little lean, but nothing, Ryan, has come easy for South Carolina offensively. Zaya just won a four from the floor. Eight point Tennessee lead. Boston is literally triple teamed. Bounces out of it. Dump inside, Cardoso deep catch, can't finish it. Great job by Horston. Coming back to control the rebound. A oh, beautiful feed and <laughs> an outstanding rejection from Aaliyah Boston to prevent the pucket layup. Jordan Horson coming down in transition. Beautiful feed and Aaliyah Boston does not give up on any plays and able to save that one. Now about South Carolina, they have three of the top ten shot blockers in the SEC. They average nine, nine block shots per game. That's ridiculous. Incredible defensive team. Here's Horston. Horston on the attack. Can't bank it in. Got another good look. Hollingshed has made her mark on the offensive glass. Walker leaves it short. And that time Cardoso controls it for South Carolina. I know you felt like Hollingshed was going to have to be a major player tonight. So far she has been. Yeah, she's used her length well and her size. Zaya Cook reigns in a three. So important. Zaya Cook is so important to South Carolina because of that. We saw her with the dribble pull up, but she is their most capable three-point shooter. 38% on the season, 35% in her career. Darby sidesteps and leaves it way short. Out of bounds, maybe not the best look there from Tess Darby. We'll step aside, 4.34 to go in the second. Tennessee, a five-point lead on number one, South Carolina. Rebecca, Ryan, and Holly, we've got the exclusive reveal coming your way at the half. Well, Kelsey, we cannot wait to check that out at halftime. The top 16 reveal. Been a good game thus far. Tennessee, a five-point lead. South Carolina's really struggled shooting the basketball. Cook connects two big threes in this second quarter from Zaya Cook. Yeah, zone that time for Tennessee, and Zaya Cook was able to get a wide open look on the weak side. Down 10 moments ago, it is now a two point game. An 8 0 South Carolina run. been more like a, a, a fast-paced walk. <laughs> and Horston got it on the rim, kept it alive. It's going to stay here. They say it last hit South Carolina. And great effort there from Jordan Horston to win the possession back for Tennessee. And when you make the kind of effort you do, you sit and wait for your teammates to come and help you <laughs> up from out of bounds. Just look at this. Toes right on the line, saves it, and she sits there, hands outstretched. Right, who's going to come help me up? Yep. You've earned it. Horston has done all the little things this half, which is exactly what Kelly Harper told us about before the game, saying more so than points, we need her rebounding, we need her passing. She's eight boards now in this first half. Horston misfires there. Three of ten from the floor now. Wow, nice hands from Zaya Cook. Cook all the way in, can't bank it in. Cardoso, no. And a whistle, it's going to stay here. Loose ball foul against Tennessee. It's on Rakia Jackson, and that is going to be her second. Tennessee's done a pretty good job most of this game. Even when they can't corral the defensive board, trying to tip it and keep it alive to a teammate. So two fouls on Jackson. 
who is going to check out for Tennessee. Obviously, Jackson, an essential player to the Lady Vols, and you wonder if she'll be done for the remainder of the half. Cook has the last eight for South Carolina. Bree Beal, too strong, long board. Beal gets it back. Zaya Cook, no. Rebound, snared inside. Fletcher couldn't finish it. Cardoso will. Right there, Ryan. <laughs> That's yeah. South Carolina basketball. A 10-0 South Carolina run. They had about four offensive boards on that possession. And Tennessee had mostly done a great job keeping them off the glass prior to that trip down when you think about the way South Carolina normally dominates the offensive glass. South Carolina's size and their depth has a cumulative wear down effect on you. And a turnover from Horston. Here comes Cook, three on two. Cook weaves, can't finish. Beal, 10. Another offensive rebound. And a 12-0 South Carolina run has turned a 10-point deficit into a two-point lead. And if you're Tennessee, you're hoping you can get to halftime without things getting away from you with Jackson on the bench. Horston, boy, Horston has been just a little too giddy on some of these open attempts. Yeah, the last one, she saw Leah Boston out of the corner of her eye. Boston, great look. Fletcher connects. Out of three, a 15-0 South Carolina run. How do you clean up a dirty lane, Ryan Rucco? You make a couple of these. Well, Tennessee had a nine-point lead after the first. Second quarter has been all South Carolina. 15-0 run. Tennessee has missed nine straight shots. And Rebecca, in that mix, they've had some really good looks. They've just seemed rushed. Yeah, they've been they're two for 14 so far here in the second quarter. Now, let me ask you, if you're Kelly Harper, are you leaving Rakia Jackson on the bench right now with the two fouls? Or yes. this you are, okay? Yes. It's, there's only 120 left. You cannot afford her, for her to pick up her third. Hollingshed able to get back to it, and a foul against Cardozo. He's going to keep things here with Tennessee. Rakia Jackson, who has been on an incredible tear, last four games averaging over 25 points per. Here's Horston. Threw it away, flagged down by Striplin. Still 11 to shoot. And a foul is going to go against Cardoso. That will be her second. And Victoria Saxton will come and get Camilla Cardoso. So 6 7 goes out, but 6 2 and long <laughs> comes yeah. in. Stein will come and get Camilla Cardoso. So 6-7 goes out, but 6-2 and long <laughs> comes yeah. in. You know, th that's where the depth of South Carolina's size is really unmatched by any other team in the country. And their, their depth plays so often. Wow, another foul. This time Saxton is called for the personal. Fourth team foul on South Carolina. So it will still be an inbound for Tennessee. Dawn Staley is obviously not pleased. Tennessee has not scored in the last five and a half minutes. Under a minute to go in this first half. Powell, shifty. Powell couldn't sneak it in around Beal, and at last hit South Carolina. Eight to shoot here for the Lady Ball. And that's the key. It has to be around Beal because you can't go over Beal because Beal is big. <laughs> and you can't one. go through Beal either. No, you can't. I mean, you can try. But she's a human. <laughs> and that time, the foul's called against Horston. That will be her first. 
They have a nice stretch, about four fouls in, what, 30 seconds? Yeah. If you like the sound of whistles, that was the <laughs> sequence for you. Fletcher, two for one opportunity for South Carolina. Boston can't finish it. Beal, another offensive rebound. Beal couldn't finish it. Gets fouled. Bree Beal insisting her way on the offensive glass. And will go to the strike. Bree Beal has eight rebounds in this first half. Yeah, she has cer certainly been insisting her way in there. Jordan Horson has nine rebounds this half. Seen some really good rebounding from the guard spot. Beal averages four boards per game. You know, one of the things she talked to us about earlier today at shoot around was how she's feeling the weight of her career coming to an end, her career coming to an end, and, and it has almost focused her and them as a group because there's a pride of, hey, I want to end my collegiate career a certain way. I want to end it the right way. So she feels really locked in. Another offensive rebound, and she lays it in off the missed free throw. Especially when you're a senior, everything just feels a little bit different because you know it's your last time around. A 17-0 South Carolina run. And they have taken advantage on the back half of this run with Rakia Jackson on the bench. Striplin's three is good. And wow, did Tennessee need that. Zaya Cook. Nearly banks it in from half court. That'll do it for the first half. That strip with three and a 17-0 South Carolina run. But a big time second quarter from the reigning champs. And they have turned a nine point deficit after the first into a four point lead at halftime. And Dawn Staley is with Holly Rowe. Well coach, 10 points in that first quarter. What changed with your team that allowed you to go on a 17-3 run to close this half? We're settling into the game. I mean, it's a great place to be. It's the SEC. You're on the road. Crowd is responding. Tennessee's responding. It's, it's a good game. They're really packing the paint. How have you guys adapted to that to start hitting some of those threes? Well, one, we, we're, we're hitting threes, too. I think Aaliyah Boston is just making great decisions. She's not forcing the ball. They're doubling her. She's kicking it out. We're, we're shooting the ball in rhythm, and hopefully it'll loosen up a little bit. If not, I hope these threes keep falling. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Tennessee trailing South Carolina by four. Time to head to the studio. Top 16 reveal. Halftime report now. So the top 16 will start with the number four seeds first. Looks a little bit like this. Michigan, Arizona, Texas, and Villanova. Andrea, Michigan down five spots and Arizona into the top 16. Yeah, Kelsey, you mentioned what have teams done lately? How have they performed lately? That's Michigan and Arizona. Arizona with two big wins. Top five win over Utah. Top 25 over Colorado. Michigan coming off of two losses. That's why they dropped. And you see the overall seeds in parentheses on the right. So, Charlie, that takes us to the three seeds where Iowa, Notre Dame, Duke, and Ohio State are three seeds. You're pretty passionate about Ohio State and where they are. Well, Kelsey, I really don't think Ohio State should be on the three line. They were they were four seed, the number 16 overall team in the last reveal two weeks ago. And now the Buckeyes since then were blown up by Indiana, played a close game against Penn State, and did, did impressively beat Michigan on the road the other night and I think that stuck firmly in the committee's eyes and that's why Ohio State went from 16 to 12 overall in a three seed. Some interesting changes here between the two seeds and the one seeds as you see LSU is a five seed Maryland is coming in at a two seed as well. UConn down three spots this reveal and Virginia Tech Drea up five. Yeah Virginia Tech with a big top 25 win two top 25 wins since that last reveal moves them up for Connecticut. They dropped from the overall four seed to the seven seed and it's not just just their loss to St. John's on Tuesday. They had a close win against Villanova, and then that Creighton game could have went either way when you talked to the committee. That's what factored into them dropping. UConn 3-3 three and three over their last six games. So who moves into that spot that UConn vacated? Well, it is Utah up two spots in the committee's eyes, Charlie. Top three stay the same. South Carolina, the number one team in the nation with a 33-29 lead on Tennessee as we welcome you back courtside in Knoxville. Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. Well, the first quarter, 
it was all about Tennessee. The second quarter, it was certainly all about South Carolina. Yeah, and for Tennessee in that first quarter, Rakia Jackson and Jordan Horston were both terrific. They were in attack mode on the offensive end of the floor, making tough shots, and that's what South Carolina makes you do. Nothing is going to come easy. Rakia Jackson absorbing contact. Jordan Horston off the bounce, and then in the second quarter, South Carolina came alive a little bit from the perimeter. They continue to be relentless on the offensive blast, but it was so important for them to be able to hit some shots from the outside. Three of eight from three in that second quarter. Take a look at the shot chart for South Carolina. Shot at just 31.8%, but a lot of second opportunities in that second quarter as well to help them get the lead back. The first quarter was dominated by Tennessee, the second quarter, South Carolina, the three-point shooting, woke up for the Gamecocks in that second quarter in the offensive glass. They are unlike maybe any team we have ever seen in the history of college basketball when it comes to their offensive rebounding prowess. Let's check in now with Holly Rowe. Kelly Harper of Tennessee told me at the half that the second quarter, that scoring drought, their pace just stopped a little bit. She said, we're not going as quick as we were. We fell off on our pace, and we need to go quicker. But then on the offensive glass, those offensive rebounds were a huge issue. 12 second chance points, and really, it's Bree Beal. She said, we have to make a decision right now. We're not guarding her, so nobody's putting a body on her as she crashes into the glass. Bree Beal alone, nine rebounds in that first half. They're going to have to make a decision. Do they step out and guard her and not double the post? It's tough. Yeah, that, that's that's the hard thing and right now Tennessee in a zone defense which is going to be a challenge as well but certainly they were playing Beal almost like a zone in that first half and then it's hard to box out. Saxton gets the roll on the little 12 footer. Well pre Beal nine rebounds in that first half. That's a season high for boards in a game. Her career high is 13. She has six offensive rebounds which matches her career high last done against Tennessee. Here's Walker into the paint, stops, did not have an angle. Another chance here, Horston. Horston, who had a great first, struggled in the second. Horston gets blocked by Boston, one to shoot for Tennessee. You can't go over him, Ryan. You gotta <laughs> go around. <laughs> second block for Aaliyah Boston, fifth for South Carolina, they lead the nation. Walker has to get it in. And it's a five second violation as Tennessee turns it over. If Tennessee didn't have a turnover in that first quarter and had five then in the second and one on their first possession here in the third. Uh, and, and back to Holly's report. Uh, Tennessee has to score in transition in the open floor because when South Carolina sets their defense, they are so difficult to score against. South Carolina, 33 straight wins. It's been 353 days since their last loss. Here's Cook accelerating, hit the side of the backboard. And Jackson comes away with it for Tennessee. Jackson galloping, pulling. No. But at least that's the pace that you want if you're Tennessee. Beal swivels and gets fouled. Bree Beal is going back to the free throw line. Talk about wanting to get outrun when South Carolina gets to the line. You can't get outrun against them. Right. Beal hits the first. The crowd here, unlike Arizona a couple weeks ago, waits for the home team to score. Right. And then we'll sit down. Do you like the emojis on sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Anything on a stick, right? Uh, yeah. That one, uh, the emojis on, on sticks is pretty good. 21 to three, South Carolina run dating back to the end of that second quarter. Here's Horston, spinning, leaning, and the fans and the emojis can sit. <laughs> that was a good decision, the on-ball screen to have Zaya Cook switch on to Jordan Horston because that's a player she can shoot over. Here's Beal. 
There's the sagging man-to-man -man again. Oh, Rakia Jackson, that's not where she wants to get that third foul. Three on Jackson. And decision time for Kelly Harper, who took Jackson out in the second when she picked up her second with three-plus minutes to go. Is going to leave her on the floor here. Fletcher. Over to Boston, she'll shoot, cannot hit. And Walker comes away with it for Tennessee. Darby nearly at it, taken by Beal, but a foul is called by see, Roy Gobain. See how physical it is in the yeah. post? Well, and that's the thing about a player with three fouls like Jackson right now is this is the kind of game where it's really hard not to pick up that fourth. Yeah, it's so physical. Jackson got tripped by Saxton. And Rakia Jackson is going to get two shots. You know, she's been doing well, Ryan, to use your phrasing sometimes. Insisting her way to the yeah. basket. Yes. Third foul on Saxton. Well, Jackson has seemed very much in control in the minute she's been on the floor. Seen her have a, a command about her in transition. Seen her been able to assist her way to the line. Whereas Horston came out of the gates making a huge impact and in the second quarter got a little frenetic. Mm -hmm. Well, Horston was 0 for 6 from the floor in that second quarter with a couple of turnovers. Cardoso surrounded, did not matter. 6 7 and used all of it. Jackson gets whacked and Beal called for the foul. Came late, but it came. This is something South Carolina has that no one else does, and that's a 6'7 talented post player coming in off the bench. Nice little reverse pivot. I mean, the defender's right there, arms outstretched, but it is not going to matter because she can see and score over you. So now Beal picks up her third. will have to go to the bench, see if Tennessee can take advantage with the impact Bree Beal has made in this game. They get it into Jackson. One on one with Boston, had it poked by Cook. Jackson can't hit. Walker got a paw on it, but no more. Fletcher stops on a dime and gets the whistle against Horston. Free throws for Fletcher. A big Monday women's college basketball number 19. Texas hosts Baylor at the Moody Center in Austin at 7 p.m. on ESPN 2. It's always fun to watch these two, those two teams battle late in the season. Tied for first in the Big 12. Battle for Texas. Was there anything that jumped out to you about the top 16 reveal at the half with Charlie Cream, and Drea and Kelsey? Nothing that jumped out too much. Yeah. You know, they, Charlie Cream talked about, you know, how it's how fluid it is. And that's yeah. the part that's interesting is from the first reveal to the last, things change so dramatically. Think about a performance like Colorado's tonight, yeah. which we heard our crew talking about, taking Stanford to a double overtime. Horston pull up, won't go. Cardoso secures it for South Carolina. Now an eight-point lead for the Gamecocks. Zaya Cook gets it over to Hall. Cook hit a couple of huge threes in the second quarter. She went on a personal 8-0 run after South Carolina had fallen behind by 10. And that is some beautiful handling from Zaya Cook. Simple. Just the high ball screen in the middle of the floor. She comes off at hesitation and then finishing the paint. 10 points for Cook. The lead is 10 for South Carolina, their largest of the game. Stripling. Rainbow three won't go. Horston over the back is called for the foul. And that will be number three on Horston. 
High ball screen, and Horson tries to fight over. There's some contained defense, but not enough of it. Just a little hesitation there, in and out. Dribble, beautifully done. Zaya Cook, a tested champion. We heard Holly talking about her defensive impact this season. Dawn Staley raved about that, the complete game that Zaya's been playing for South Carolina this year. Fletcher, catch, fire, and hit from three. South Carolina has taken control. And you saw how wide open she was because of the defense of Tennessee. Timeout, Tennessee. A 13-point lead for the defending champs. Everything changes for South Carolina when they can hit some from deep. Will Tennessee start to come out and contest? We'll see. At 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Then you have it, noon, Notre Dame, Olivia Miles coming off her heroics. Last week against Louisville, we were there for that. And then you will have number two, Indiana, and number six, Iowa, at 2 p.m. Just a, an awesome game. Some big-time stars. Mackenzie Holmes, Caitlin Clark in that game Sunday, 2 Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to get to Iowa. We had a really nice time last yeah, time we did. in Iowa. We certainly did. People were quite kind. We had some good snacks. <laughs> Shot clock down to two. Nice hesitation there from Horston. How about Cook at one end with the hesitation on a very similar play, and then Horston on the other. Needed that bucket. Horston had gone cold for a while. In the corner, Zaya Cook lines it up and knocks it down. South Carolina has done a really nice job of getting the ball to the middle of the floor and then finding that open shooter in the left corner. 12-2, South Carolina run. Although, truthfully, it's just felt like one long run since the end of the first quarter. They've outscored Tennessee 39-16 since trailing 19-10 after one. Nice take there. Jackson on the reverse. Great job to use the rim to save her from the shot blocker behind her. Hall thought about it. Boston being double teamed. Boston wants it, gets the deep catch. And Jackson had to be careful with the three fouls. Boston knew it. And really nice patience by the South Carolina guards to wait and work the ball around the floor so they could get their player of the year a touch. First points for Boston since early in the first quarter. We'll step aside, 3.48 to go in the third. South Carolina, a 14 point lead. Great job moving the ball around the floor. Zaya Cook, that's the spot for South Carolina in terms of their threes. And then Leah Boston just continues to work and finish. Well, Don Stanley mentioned the great decisions that Aaliyah Boston was making in the first half, and there's a reason. She is one of the smartest players in college basketball. She was the academic All-American of the year, and this has been coming for a long time. This is her preschool diploma. She's excelled at every subject through entire life. Look at all of her accolades from Bible, phonics, reading, numbers, and writing. She's a member of the honor roll growing up in St. Thomas. I'm just very impressed that her mother, Cleone, has all of these certificates when I asked her for them. <laughs> so organized, but she is such a great student. And how about this report card? Really the only bees in sight? Penmanship, and I just, I think it's a ripoff. They shouldn't have given her bees for her penmanship in first grade. But thank Wait. you, Cleone, for these wonderful certificates. Your daughter is incredible and takes care of all of her business in the classroom, on the court. What an amazing young lady. That's some report card. I like the certificate of honors in all subjects. Yeah. Instead of giving like six different certificates, it just said all subjects. Like you have so many awards, we need to just give you one blanket trophy. <laughs> yes. Here's for being incredibly brilliant and awesome at everything. Well, Leah Boston is no doubt going to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft this year, as long as she does come out of college, which she has not officially said she is going to yet, although it is widely assumed she will. 
I'll tell you what, Ryan, if I was getting double and triple teamed in the lane like this yeah. as in college, I'd be like, all right, let me get to where they have a wider lane in a defensive three seconds. Get me to the W. Yes. Zaya Cook air balls it, shot clock violation, Tennessee basketball. See Kiera Fletcher picking up full court, and, and it's been huge for her to hit the threes as she's done today. Two of two from three. Coming into this game on the season, two of 15 from three. That's why teams leave her open, and today she certainly made them pay. And South Carolina started 0 for 6, but they're 5 of 8 since from three-point range. That turnover, by the way, last possession was South Carolina's first since the first quarter. Whistle here, and both teams in the bonus at this point, so Jackson is going to the line. As much as it feels like Tennessee is now in a hole that can't be overcome, and South Carolina's taking total control of the game. Well, hold on a second. It's only an 11-point game. Now 10, still three minutes left to this third. Tennessee coming off a stop. You could build a little momentum here at the end of the quarter. Yeah, and you see them extending their full court defense. Take some time off the shot clock. Make things a little more challenging for South Carolina offensively. Cook thought about shooting that, did not. Beal has been on the bench for an extended period in this third after picking up her third foul. So too has Saxton. Cardozo can't hit. Bree Hall the rebound. So even with Cardozo pulled out, it's Bree Hall who comes up with an offensive board, the 17th for South Carolina. It's just a mentality that South Carolina has. Every player getting to the offensive glass. Fletcher spinning and hitting. Big game for Kiara Fletcher. 12 points now tonight. That's another part of this South Carolina team. They have so many ways to beat you. Hollingshed rattles out a three. Zaya Cook swiftly up the floor. Into the corner. Here's Boston, she's fouled. Free throw's coming for Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, I love it. Kier Fletcher mentioned she's two for two on the day from the three-point line. She was completely open. Nope, she's gonna get her big girl a touch, and I like that. Uh, let's take a look at our former McDonald's All-American, Aaliyah Boston, the 2022 SEC Female Athlete of the Year. 77 career double-doubles, third most in SEC history. She is absolutely the projected number one pick in this year's draft. It was a McDonald's All-American back in 2019. It's been really fun to watch the evolution of, of her game over the course of the last four years. So dominant and, and asked her a couple of days ago about, you know, this year and how much defensive attention she's gotten. And she said, well, I've learned patience and uh, how to pass. <laughs> she also has such a wonderful personality, effervescent young woman who's going to be a terrific ambassador for whatever franchise drafts her in the WNBA. Obviously, likely Indiana. Holling Shed can't finish. And out of bounds, it's going to stay with Tennessee. Now they reset the shot clock there. Did that hit win? I think that's what they're trying to figure out right yeah. now. Yeah. Do you have a guess on rim or no rim? I thought it was no rim. I thought it was no rim as well. Reviewing for possible timing error. D. Kantner, one of the great officials in college basketball, going to take a look. Oh, oh. his rim. Ooh. There was a just a little dash of rim. Why did, we, why did I get so excited? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it did hit the rim. The good thing with D too is she'll be quick. It's the bottom of the rim, but still yeah. the rim. Yeah. So the shot clock reset was indeed the right move. Why didn't she put the headset on and tell us? She forgot? I think she realized how quickly we saw it, too. Yeah.
So Tennessee basketball, 20 on the shot clock, 127 left in this third. Franklin lost the footing and then the basketball. Here's Fletcher, he's tied a season high with 12 points. Cardoso, great position, couldn't pop it in. Horston comes away with a rebound, her 10th. Jordan Horston all the way home and reversed it wildly. She's looking to draw the foul, but you have to go up with more control to get the foul. Boston, giving some space, says, I'll take that. Is that what she said? Actually could hear her if you just <laughs> took your left <laughs> ear off for a moment. Nine points for Aaliyah Boston, four rebounds. That's a low number for her, but her teammates have cleaned up the glass plenty. Fletcher, off and running. Kiara Fletcher dives in, finishes plus the foul. Kiara Fletcher having a huge night in the South Carolina lead has reached 17. Starting on the defensive end and corralling the basketball, Kiara Fletcher gets in there, head up and understands she's got the size, strength advantage, goes right at the rim. She's made really, really good decisions. Yeah. All game long, you know, when, when to take the shot, when to penetrate, when to find her bigs inside. Spent four years at Georgia Tech. Missed last year due to injury. Scored over a thousand points in her career there. Completes the three-point play here. We talked about the Opportunity for Tennessee, cutting it to 10. Three minutes left in the quarter. Well, South Carolina answers with an 8-0 run. Now an 18-point game. And again, the cumulative effect of South Carolina's depth. Jackson couldn't reverse flick it in. Not many can. And that'll do it for the third. South Carolina, an 18-point lead. Aaliyah Boston's numbers may not be gaudy, but her impact constantly being felt. Yeah, she's just going to post up strong and going to be surrounded by defenders. I mean, you just look at how dirty that paint is. That is just for Aaliyah Boston. And South Carolina has worked well around it here, not forcing anything, making the extra pass to Zaya Cook in the left corner, getting it deep position and able to finish. She has had a solid game. Only nine points and four boards, but a solid game for Aaliyah Boston. The reigning player of the year, South Carolina, 59-41 lead over Tennessee. They end the third on an 8-0 run. Hollingshed thought about taking it, did not. Here's Stripling, rumbling and gets denied by Boston. And Boston saying, wait a second, Stripling still had the ball when she went out of bounds, and Aaliyah Boston's right. And the call is reversed. Fourth rejection for Boston. Just with both hands in the air, does a good job not swiping down. Yeah, Strickland needed it, just let it go. Yeah. You know, the other part about Boston defensively, Rebecca, it's not just she has size and shot blocking on the interior, but you watch her move, her activity defensively. Yeah, that's one of the things that will certainly translate in the WNBA as well. She can switch out and contain guards on the perimeter. Right. Nice job by Stripling to step out and hit the three. Second three for Stripling. Tennessee certainly could use more of that here in this fourth. They are just three of eight from downtown in this game. Hall, no. Got it around. Who's going to end up with it? It's Tennessee. Walker. Jackson, great, has he in the lane? 
She's consistently been Tennessee's best option. Gets Aaliyah Boston to switch out onto her and then able to go by and finishes on the other side of the rim so it can't get blocked. Beautiful move from Jackson. Tennessee trying to get a little something going here in this fourth. Boston can't pop it in. Saxton a chance and Aaliyah Boston's hurt. Aaliyah Boston is grabbing at the back of her right leg. After that shot, and we'll go right to the South Carolina bench. You hope it's just a cramp. She knocked, oh no, it was the left knee that was knee to knee. You working look like that right calf. With the Hypervolt or Theragun. As Jackson floats it in, plus the foul and a chance for three for Jackson as Aaliyah Boston is getting worked on on the South Carolina bench. Still tugging at that calf. Jackson misses the free throw. Howling shed the offensive rebound. Strip with a three. She got it. Tennessee with some life. Third three of the night for Caroline Striplin. A 10-2 run from the Lady Vols with Boston anchored to the bench right now. Zaya Cook, big shot from Zaya. He has had huge shots at key moments throughout this game as Saxton is going to pick up the foul. That is her fourth. Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball, part five of the seven-part documentary. Looks at 1990 through 1999. Dawn Staley capping her amazing collegiate career at Virginia. Rick Pitino leading Kentucky back to prominence. Pat Summit with her best decade ever. Three straight national titles Monday, 9 Eastern on SEC Network. Boston chugging some Gatorade. All signs point to a calf cramp. Right. Get those electrolytes in you. Fletcher, double dribble or travel. Turned it over. And if you're Tennessee, I think you want to make sure Rakia Jackson gets some touches. She has been the toughest matchup for South Carolina. Boston appears ready now. Although, maybe grimacing just a bit there. Tennessee, three for their first 15 this half, four or five since. There is Jackson, and again, unstoppable. Yeah, great job setting the double screen for her to dribble off. When she's in attack mode, in particular, going right really hard to defend. 21 for Rakia Jackson. Having a big fourth quarter. 10-point game. Tennessee needs a stop. Zaya Cook won't give it to him. Another big bucket from Zaya. Jackson. Fading away. Back iron, no. Follow, yes, from Darby. So much of this run for Tennessee happening with Jordan Horston on the bench. Cook. Over to Fletcher. Saxton playing with four. Double. Cuts through three. Can't flip it in. Rebound control from Jackson and an opportunity here for Tennessee. Jackson. Jackson into the paint, got bumped. 
Flipped it up, thought she was going to get a foul, but did not. Here's Bree Beal off to Cook, gets blocked by Jackson. And it last touched South Carolina. It's going to be Tennessee basketball. Rakia Jackson doing a great job hustling back, leaving space between her body and Cook so that she can get the clean shot block. And Jackson being taken out at the moment. Perhaps just getting a blow here. Yeah, give her a couple of seconds before the five-minute timeout. Yep. Ten-point game. Walker with Horston back in. Here's Hollingshed facing up and hitting. It's down to single digits for the first time in a while. Terrific atmosphere in Knoxville. Beal leans in and finishes. Bree Beal on time for South Carolina. A double-double for Beal, 11 points, a season-high 10 rebounds. Walker gets back. And she will shoot two. 4-14 to go in the fourth, and things have gotten a little interesting here. Tennessee has gone on a little run. Tennessee showing some fight, staying attached in this game. Stripling with the quick old board and finish, and then Hollingshed, turn, shoot. It's only 10 with four to go. Well, South Carolina got up 18, looked like they were going to run away, but Tennessee's made a little push here in the fourth. And so much has been about Rakia Jackson attacking the basket. Good things happen, getting a couple touches inside the paint and then stepping into threes as well, making some nice passes, a little less one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit more assisted basketball. It's been good for Tennessee here late in the fourth. Jackson fifth straight game with 20-plus, has averaged 25 over this stretch. Tennessee had just four assists the first three quarters of this game. They have four assists in this fourth. Much of that run came with Horston on the bench for Tennessee. She is back in now. Walker, Hollingshed, Striplin, Jackson, and Horston are the five for Tennessee. Raven Johnson, Camilla Cardoso, who has 14 rebounds. Aliyah Boston, Bree Beal. And Zaya Cook, the five for South Carolina. Walker gets the second. Nine point game. Boston back in after the apparent cramp of the right catch. Extended pressure by Tennessee once again. And a deflection, but no turnover. South Carolina gets it across. This time they're running the middle ball screen with Johnson instead of Cook. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Cardoso. That'll be her third, and South Carolina turns it over. Mm. Stripling kind of just stepped yeah. in the way. Not a lot there. No. Jackson. The Hezzy. Well it, defended that time by South Carolina. Needs some help. Plenty of time on the shot clock. But There's, I like it. I like the screening action with Jackson. And then Zaya Cook comes up with possession, and South Carolina is awarded a timeout. Big time defense there from Zaya Cook. South Carolina wanted a foul as well. They thought there was a trip there from Tennessee. They are awarded possession in the timeout. Now what's at stake in this game? Well, South Carolina has not lost a game since the SEC championship game a season ago against Kentucky. That was March 6th of 2022. Tennessee seeking its first win against an AP number one since 2005. Tennessee 0-6 against an AP top 25 team this season. 
And so much of this point of the season is trying to survive until March comes because February can be tough for everybody. You know, the, the end isn't quite in sight and you just can't wait to get to those uh, postseason moments. And that's something Don Staley was talking about with you before the game, saying, yeah, this is one of those periods of time where it takes a mental toughness. You're really pushing through. Johnson gets bumped by Walker. Third team foul on Tennessee. And as good as Fletcher has been, it's Raven Johnson in the ball game now, running make, the point. Make it second team foul on Tennessee. Boston pedaling through, bustling her way in. Might have gotten away with a travel there. Gets the offensive rebound though, and another chance here for South Carolina. Twenty offensive rebounds for the Gamecocks. They had 31 last season against Tennessee, and the C's part for Zaya Cook. How many times has South Carolina run that middle on ball screen for Zaya Cook to go to her strong right hand and it continues to be fruitful? 19 for Zaya, who has had so many key buckets in this game. It started in the second quarter after Tennessee had built a nine point lead. Zaya went on a personal 8-0 run. And it's continued in the second half where Cook has scored 11. I mean, it's not complicated. Middle, high, on ball screen, hesitates, gets the switch of the big honor, and is going to be able to go by most post players. Zaya got off to a tough start, but she has kept the foot on the gas since the second. In particular, when Boston was out of the game and Tennessee making their run. You know, one of the things Holly talked about in the open is a rough offensive start doesn't derail Zaya Cook anymore. She's playing such strong defense or passing. You know, Don Staley talked to us about that before the game, how it used to be, hey, if she wasn't hitting shots, there wasn't necessarily the value of her on the floor. And she would get down as well. Different story with senior Zaya Cook. Tennessee coughs it up. Held ball, possession arrow remains with the Lady Vols. Boston now up to 11 points. Beal has 11, Fletcher has 15, Cook has 19. Horston, Stripling, and Jackson all in double figures for Tennessee. Jackson leading the way with 21. Saxton will come in for Beal. So you have Saxton, Boston, and Cardoso. Just a massive lineup. And Boston showing off the size, the length, and the athleticism with that steal. High middle ball screen, anyone? <laughs> Boston. Left alone, South Carolina can run more clock. Johnson wheeling, taking, and hitting. A 15-point game. And this one is all but over as South Carolina is going to improve to 28-0. and It'll be 34 straight wins for the defending champions. And Dawn Staley is going to empty the bench. The South Carolina faithful will applaud the effort. Big performance from Zia Cook after a rough first quarter.
Aaliyah Boston drawing the usual gravity that she does. Brie Beal, a double-double. 11 points, 11 rebounds. After a tough start to the game, once again, South Carolina is going to find itself on the winning side of things. Such great composure, too, in the first quarter on the road. And we've talked about how they've been successful on the road in close games throughout the course of this season, but never rattled. Kind of you got the sense from South Carolina and Don Staley, we'll, we'll settle in. It might yeah. take us a quarter, quarter and a half. We're going to do it. <laughs> Cardoso with the 6-7 stoning. That's one of the things Don Staley talked to us about. He said how loose and confident she feels her team is after winning a national championship last year, feeling relief as a result of that, being able to play more free, not worrying when they're behind in a tight game like this. And South Carolina puts another one in the left column. 73 to 60 the final at Tennessee. The Gamecocks improve to 28 and 0. They clinch a share of the SEC regular season title with their 34th straight victory. Zaya Cook with 19 points, had 11 of them in the second half. And South Carolina continues to find ways to win games. They hold Tennessee to 36% shooting after Tennessee had gotten off to a hot start. Zaya Cook, key buckets throughout. She is with Holly Rowe. Well, Zaya, this game got close. They got it down to single digits. How did you personally turn on the gas at that point to lead your team to this win? Um, just let, let my buckets come to me. Um, I know when Coach wants me to run flash, I know exactly what she wants from me when we run that play. Uh, so I was just staying disciplined and, and trying to knock my shots down. You didn't start out the greatest night shooting. How have you not let that derail you and you continue to contribute and find ways? Just continue to turn the page at all at all times and also trying to do things that are different, like playing defense, trying to rebound, and just doing stuff like that. So that type of stuff keeps me going. So when it's time for me to start scoring, it's able to happen for me. This is your senior season. You feel different. Your mental game feels stronger. How do you think you're taking over and leading this team right now? Being mentally strong right now, we got a, a big push ahead of us, and we got to make sure we're staying disciplined. Uh, mentally, we got to stay in the right space, and we can't take our foot off the gas at any moment. Thanks, Zaya. Thank you. Well, big performance from Zaya Cook. South Carolina, a 73 to 60 win over Tennessee, their 34th straight victory. Coming up next, it's the NHL's The Calgary Flames take on the Vegas Golden Knights for our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Jimmy Platt. Rebecca Lobo, the Hall of Famer, and Holly Rowe, the Hall of Famer. I'm Ryan Rucco. Thanks for joining us. Time to go back to our studio. Kelsey, Drea, and Charlie.